Hello everybody, welcome to episode 126 of Wool is the Answer. For those who don't know us, I'm Marie. I'm Dominique. Hello. Welcome. There we go. Right. We're all set. Right, let me just put the screen on big so I can see it. There we go. Not that I really want to look at myself on the screen in big. Oh, so close, isn't it? Oh, I just wish it would pour down. It's just not fun. At Hi, all. Victoria. Not long now. Victoria will be packed and, I mean, ready to go almost. Oh. Right, there we go. Because um, the next retreat starts a week tomorrow. A week tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, I can't believe we're in July. Never mind anything else. A week tomorrow. A week today we're in July. Well, a week today, but you know what I mean? It, it, yeah. It will we'll be in July. I don't know where this year is going. It's just whizzing by. So well, it can whiz by quicker till we get out of this heat. I know. It's just so muggy. It keeps looking like it's going to pour down. The wind gets up and then nothing. I'm like, oh, come on, just break. The air just needs to clear a bit. But anyway. Um, yeah. Well, I think today we've, it, the majority of stuff we'll be showing you is probably um, Wool Monty Hall. Um, we had a lovely time, didn't we, at the show? It was really good, really, really good. It was really nice to see. Sorry, I've just seen Victoria's going to be in Lincoln this time next week. Oh, all the way from America. Um, yeah, it was really, it was a really nice show. Really nice, easy setup because we could drive straight into the arena. We have never, ever parked so close, have we? I mean, the trailer, the back of the trailer, was two foot from the stall, yeah, so... It was perfect, uh, wasn't it? Yeah. And bearing in mind the weather, it couldn't have worked any better, could it? So... No, it was brilliant. And then it was just such a nice, nice atmosphere. We we were busy all day Saturday, but just chatting to people, so... Yeah. It was lovely. If you came to say hello, thank you very much. We really did appreciate it. Um, you know we like to have a natter. You know we always have time to talk, unless we run off our feet. But it was lovely to be able to talk to people and have a good natter, see what everybody was making, yes. choosing colours. That's nice. That's always nice, isn't it? Helping people choose colours. But yeah, it was lovely. And so. there were a few combinations that I and I do it often now. If you see combinations that we never put together, as they come up to the um, counter to pay, I'm like, oh, I'm really sorry. I just need to take a picture. Just yeah. because the combinations that people put together, you're like, I need to remember that one. Exactly. Um, yeah. It's so good. yeah, there's some there's some brilliant combinations. So, um, yeah, it would we'll start sharing. If you start making things, do share because we really do like to see. There yeah. were two sisters that say they do um, a make along with each other every year. Yeah. And they'd used one of Nitrish's designs for shawl. I don't know if they said last year, but previously. Yeah. And this year they both bought the Mosaic Al booklet and yarn. So completely different colour yarns to do the same project at the same time. And they said they would share. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what they, because they were completely different colourways. Um, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. It's nice that they're just doing a make along with themselves. Hi, Lucy. You'll be there. Hi, Lucy. Week. Looking forward to seeing you too. I've seen you I was going to say, Lucy, Victoria, Victoria, Lucy, you'll both be with us a week on a week tomorrow. Yes. Um, yeah, so it was, it was just such a nice show. Really nice. And one thing we forgot to mention, although we did put a social media post about how it. We were supposed to mention it last Friday, weren't we? We yes. released another golden ticket. Yes. So for those who don't know, um, in 2019, when we did our last Wolf shows, um, we did the golden ticket and it was it was really, um, it worked really well, didn't it? And it was lovely because the lady who won the golden ticket came to see us this year at our first Wolf show back at Boxton, uh, Boxton yeah. to say that she was the winner. So it was lovely. So what it is, on the inside of your ball band, on here, on, on the inside. inside, hidden. Don't be going peeking to our balls of wool like this and having a nose because you probably won't be able to see it. But on the inside, 
um, there is a special code. One person will win £50 work off our website on anything. Um, so it's on one of our balls of wool. We know which ball of wool it is, but we don't know specifically which ball, because obviously we have a yeah. number of the same. Um, so, yes, so that'll count for um, shows and also, you know, internet sales as well. Um, it's on one of those balls of wool. So, so check. If you've bought yeah. from us since Wool Monty, check your ball bands. Because yeah, the lady band. that came to us from Buxton, we'd kept saying on the podcast, check your balls, because she was... What months but she found it so because we knew we'd sold it didn't we because we'd, we'd yes. completely run out of that particular colorway at one point so we knew it had gone yeah. we weren't particularly sure who who had got it but yes. um, so we knew it had gone and we kept saying check your ball but and we were thinking oh i hope somebody does and it was lovely to meet her wasn't it she was really, it was really nice yeah but yes we've done that again this year so you know, you you've got a golden ticket on the inside yes um, and it's got a special code for the um internet but if you do win it and you happen to be coming to a wolf show just bring it along um because yeah. we'll honor it on the on the day as well so yes yeah of course we will hello everybody oh lucy's busy making outfits for a trip away Ooh, i wonder what they're going to be beautiful whatever they'll be um so shall we crack on then yes let's what would you like to see do you want to go? You go first this week. That's throwing it on you, hasn't it? No, you don't want me. You don't no, want to I go don't. first. Because it's so hot, I've got all the windows open and there are just flies everywhere and they just keep landing on me. Like we're having a moment, are you? Uh, do you want me to I go first while you control yourself? I don't know. Yeah, but why do they just land on you all the time? Just ignore them. I hate them. summer. I hate it. <laughs> just ignore them, Dominique. I just can't. Ignore they ignore them. Make your skin crawl. I have, right. I have to say today, my eyes are really sore. I feel like they look like what's it balls in the snow. Oh, really sore today. Anyway, we digress. Come on, you sure? You sure? Right. First. Let me show you this. Hello, Tracy from County Durham. I'd like to say Dad finally got home today. Not finally, but he drove home today and he sent me a message to say he's back home. So he's back in the land of land of the Prince Bishops. Come on, woman, get a grip. Come on. <gasps> well, that was worth waiting for. You finished it. Oh, I'm not putting it on. <laughs> I mean, it oh, is. Moment, love. It is all finished. The only thing of all the buttons I've got, and I've got thousands, I've not got any buttons. I just need two to. Um, join the seams. She just says basically to join the seams with one button. That's I all you do. Toggles, if that's any good. You've got what? Toggles, if that's any good. I think I want around. See, I have got, but they're the only big buttons I've got, and they're not right. Oh, well, I might have some big buttons. If you're after big buttons, I might have some wooden big buttons. Well, I think that I need. Yeah, probably wooden would not quite as big as that. I know. Mean, so they're like craft buttons, aren't they? I've got some. Well, you know, that's on the, um, um, you know, the make along we did. And I joined my. Um, oh, yes. That size wooden. Yes. I mean, yes. You're more than welcome to have a rummage. I'll, I'll get them out for tomorrow. Well, I just. Um, I thought, oh, I'm going to go funky, but it just doesn't look right. No, it doesn't look right. And they're too big. They're slightly too big. So they need to be dark. Yes. Or they need to be, um, yeah, maybe wooden would work. But I've also seen when you go on the projects page on Ravelry, some people have not even done the sides up. Ah, right. So, I mean... I'm not putting it on because it is just too hot. But it comes to where well, you can't see, but it comes to a really nice length. Yeah. I mean, go on, put it on. Look at the face. Look at the oh, face. Sake. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh 
my lord. So it does come down to a really nice length. Your arms. I mean, this is part of the danger, isn't it? All we need now is a is a is a moth to fly in, and then she'll be off. Well, the post just comes through the door. Um, so you just need two buttons, but you could just wear it open. Sally's just saying, where do your arms go? I think you can see where they go now. Just there. I'm with it. So you just hold one side then under your arm. You just so well, I've seen people, some people have put the buttons right at the bottom, yeah. but the pattern says halfway up. But instead of a button, Dominic, if you're going to just put it at the bottom, you could just sew them together ever so slightly, just like an inch. Yeah, but I, I think the button does look nice. But also, you could not put, you'd not close it because it comes down. Yeah, I'm the same, Victoria. I'm not sure if she needs buttons. I think it might, if you put buttons on, I think it's going to like bring the length up. Well, at the minute, I'm not doing anything with it. So it is, it's a really weird, well, not weird, just an unusual construction because yes, um, it's like a raglan sleeve, although it's pieced, but it just comes down a long, long way. Nice. So, Are you all hot and bothered now? Well, I was before I started, so... But fortunately, I've got myself an ice cream float. Oh, oh, nice. What, what, uh, what liquid is in it? Lemonade. Ooh. Cherry lemonade and rhubarb ice cream. I must. Oh, I wonder if we might be able to have some of those up at the retreat. I like an ice cream float. Leather buckles. Oh, good idea. Lou. I have got some leather buckles as well. I've got some black leather, black and silver leather buckles. You, I tell you what, I'll bring them tomorrow, Dominique. You can have a look well, at I'm not doing anything. I just wanted it done. I finished, I cast it off this morning and because it's been so warm, I've been able to block it and dry it. So until the winter now, I don't need to do anything. But I have got ponchos, different construction that, that are just open-sided. So I don't know, maybe... I do, like I do like leather buckles, but so it does look more like a jump, like tank toppy. Yeah. We'll see, but it is really, it was a really nice knit. Marjorie, how are you getting on? Because Marjorie's doing it as well. I must admit, like where the shoulders come down, for me, I would, I think I would want the gap a bit further up. Do you know what I mean? Because it does seem to come very down. Or it's like a cape over your shoulders, isn't it, almost? I think I'd feel a bit... Yeah, but it is because it's a poncho, isn't it? No, but it just... Just where the gap comes, I don't know. For me, I think I'd want the gap higher. Do you know what I mean? I do, but then it is just a tank top. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, but if you're joining it, I think that's what... I'd want it like that. Well, it, it feels comfy to wear. Yeah. It feels really comfy to wear. Um, I'm with you. I, I don't think, think it needs buttons. I think then it does turn it into a like a tank top, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. But until winter comes, it's going away now. Um, I would do another one. I really yeah. like it. And I think I will wear it quite a lot because I think... It is something that you could just throw on top of. It, you know, in the autumn when you don't need a big coat, but you just need something yeah. on, I think it's going to be perfect for it. So, it's like the woolen um, alternative to a vest, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Marjorie's saying she's got the back done and it's too hot to knit it. It is too hot to knit it. I really struggled. I've had to sit on the floor, cross legs, so it's all in front of me and I've got nothing on me. But I knew if I didn't finish it, it wouldn't get finished. Yeah. So, um, oh, it's the Campside Poncho by Alicia Plummer. And it says you needed five, oh, hiccups. five skeins, 160, no, 1,060 metres. 
So there were like 200 meter skeins. But what I used was the James C. Brett double knit with Merino and those 290 meters, but I've still only used less than three balls. And you're a loose knitter as well, aren't you? Yeah. And I'm not small. So, and I added length. So it, it's te I've just weighed, or I weighed it before I blocked it, 292 grams. So even if you said 300 grams, that is 870 yeah. metres. If anybody can see my face is looking black because she's talking numbers to me and I've switched it off, I'll be honest. Yeah, but it's 870 metres. It's 80 metres less than what she says you need for the um, small size. So, but better to have too many than too... Exactly. Little. There's nothing worse than running out of wool. Um, but yeah. So I would definitely recommend it, but just not in the middle of summer. You don't summer. need a window, so Dr. Marjorie. You, you need a brick. In the middle of summer. Yeah, you can see it is... It is quite slow, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It is nice. That is. And I knew that because I'd seen it. So yeah. it was exactly what I expected. It fits really nicely, but... You like a poncho, don't you? You wear them quite a lot. I, I do. Because I would wear that rather than a jacket or anything until I need a big winter coat. So I've seen a couple on Ravelry and they've done them like striped almost like a rainbow, muted. I don't know. I might, I might do another one because it was quite a quickish knit and less than 300 grams. So, yeah. Let's watch this space. You'll it like when you get back to it, Marjorie, when it cools down, you will like it. It is a really nice knit. And it's the first pattern I've knit of hers. And I yeah, I really liked it. Good. So that is my finished object for this week. What have you got? Um, well, do you want to see a purchase or do you want to see some knitting? Let's see a purchase. My purchase. I'll go in order of purchases. My first purchase I made at the Wool Monty was, look at that, Giddy Yarns, self-striping. So that's a 50 gram and a 20 gram, because I had to go pink, didn't I? I mean, it wouldn't be right if I didn't. So I've gone for the um, blues, yellows, pinks and turquoise. So I'm What's it, what colourway is it? It is colourway Midnight Sparks. Oh. It was the most pinky coloured one I could find. So um, that will turn into a pair of socks. So that will join my ever never-ending supply of sock yarn that I pay to have at the minute. I seem to have a pile of sock yarn. So I do need to crack on. I actually haven't got a pair of socks on the needle at the minute. So I've got lots of choice at the minute because I've got quite a bit of sock yarn that I've purchased recently, specifically for socks. Um, but she had loads in, didn't she? I think everybody was quite excited to go and get the... Um, yeah, the gobstoppers. The gobstoppers, uh, self-striping ones. Um, yeah, there was quite a few of us were waiting, weren't we? That was my first purchase. Well, while um, you're showing yours, I'll show mine. Because it was the only thing that I desperately wanted. I didn't need, I didn't need anything, but... I'd seen, I'd seen her um, talking about them and posting about them. So that is the one good thing about being a storeholder. I was there before we opened on yes. Saturday. Yes. So, um, and I went for that one, which That's is that, that showing up as blue, but it's mint green yeah. and pinks. Let me just, and that came with, let, you, hang on a minute, that one. Even at 36. It's, <laughs> that is, it's definitely me. I'm sure you don't, sure you don't <laughs> want to be live on the podcast. And he's just laughing because he's bought a pair of jeans off the internet. I mean, I really should have just left him in there. You could have all had a treat David in his pants. Um, a pair of jeans that should be the size that fits him clearly don't fit. Are you decent now? Oh, oh that was funny. Sorry, go on, Dominic. <laughs> Now, I was just saying it's, um, 
You can't, that's coming out blue, but it is definitely like a mint green. It's beautiful. What colour colours the main colours did you say? And say? that's cherry blossom. That's really pretty. So there were so many to choose from. It took me a while, but yeah. That's and really I, I just went for 50 because 50 in a contrast is more than enough to get a pair of socks out of for me. So, and I wouldn't necessarily knit two in the same one. So, yes. And the 50 gram sock sets all came, let me put it back, all came in a nice little organza bag. Yes, which was really it's nice, nice to keep them all tidy, isn't it? Yes. So it was really nice to, John's not here, John's gone home. Yes. Um, it was home really today. nice to meet Helen because I've watched her for such a long time and chat to her and she was just as you would expect it to be. So um, she was really busy. So I, hopefully she had a good show as well. Um, yeah. She did still have some gobstoppers left at the end of the show. So I'm guessing if she's not already done it, she'll put them on the website. I thought that have just sold out, but she'd got loads. And bless her, she had a horrendous journey home, didn't she? Because she broke down. We feel, yeah, she we did. know how that feels, don't we? Yeah, yeah. And she was a long, long way from yeah. home by herself. So, um, but yeah, so they were the, they were the purchases from Giddy Yarns. Yes. Um, the other, um, do you want another purchase? Do you want some? Let's have another purchase. The, um, another purchase I made was, um, I bought from Madrigal Yarns before, um, and it's lovely, lovely yarn. These are the same. I was after 100 grams in it, but you didn't have 100 grams. It's called New Gold Dream 83. Um, and the New colour, Gold Dream? 83. Oh. And that's the... Look at the colours in it. They are beautiful. So I think that is going... No, it wasn't. It wasn't John coming round the door. It was David. in his underpants and trying to put a pair of jeans on. I mean, honestly. Um, so I bought two of those. So the, it, the base is um, superwash merino nylon. So it's 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon. So that is going to become a shawl. It looks really kind of autumn, sunsetty. Yeah. It's beautiful colours. So. Yeah. Um, I saw it originally when I was walking past the stall. It was an Aran weight and, it, and I, drew, I was drawn into it. And I was like, oh, have you got that in a four ply? And then he hunted and he found it in the 50 gram ones. So, um, yes. So that was from Eddie at um, Madrigal Yarns. Um, but yeah, I just need to find the right shawl. Depending on what this shawl I'm knitting on the make along is like, it might, I might use that pattern. Um, Yes. I don't know. Or I might just come up with something myself, you know what I mean? I might just... Yeah. I feel it that needs to be... That might look nice in the make-along. Yeah, I feel it needs to be drapey, so it needs a bit of, sort of, either on bigger needles or... Right. In it, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, I mean, it's very my pinks and... purples in it. So, yeah, that was my... That was another one of my purchases. What other purchases have you got? I've only got one more. I only made two purchases. I only made four. Go on. Well, my other, it's not wool, it's fibre. And um, I fancied making some felt pictures because I've got quite a lot of felt that I've not used after I've made little kits and things. I've made things out of them. Then you, you're always a bit left. And I fancy making some of the, you know, the... Um, the scenic pictures, you know, where you lay it all down and, and yeah. do it that way. So we were talking to some ladies, Becky and I, because um, Becky came with us on the Sunday, didn't she, from the Dancing Puffin. Um, and we were sat talking at the table to a couple of ladies who were who had bought some of this. And they were saying how well priced it was and we were talking about pictures and that's what they were going to make there. So of course I had to go. So I bought it from Wingham Wool. Um, I mean, it, it, I am funny with touching it, so I'm all right when it's done. So I bought a blue one. 
and sky. Green one to incorporate in the land and then just some natural. So they were really good price. They were four pound each and there's quite a lot on them there. I don't know if it's done. Well, right. they look, they look brown. like big. Yeah, I need to put it down because when I'm touching it, it just makes me go a bit funny. Um, so. Can you hear all that machinery in the background? No. Right. Is there a lot of machinery outside? Yeah, and I've got no. the windows open and I never have. So no, I, I can't hear anything. It. Nothing's quite right. good. I'm now covered in that. Um, so I'm going to have a go at that. At who knows when, but I just thought it was such a good price, I couldn't resist it. And um, were they, did he um, only sell felt or did they have wool as well? No, he just sold, he just sold. I, I mean, wool. Yeah. Fibre felt in, yeah. It's not wool fibre and dyes. Right. So um, it had a bit of everything, but there's some really good prices, different, you know, different things. So yeah. um, if you were wanting to just, you know, I didn't want to spend too much on it because I say I've got some and I'm, I just want to have a go at it. I just want to have a play. So that would be, that'll be perfect when I fancy having a bash at that. Um, it was interesting because the ladies were talking to, because of the, I've got all this stuff. I, I got it from when we were at Boston that time. She was selling it off, wasn't she? Like the roll, yes. the little matting, the watch call it's with the spikes on. It was the... Design studio. No. Um, the kit was... Something Gladwell? Oh, I don't know. No, she was selling loads of bits separate off. Yes. Yeah, and I just bought rolling pit. But then we were talking to the ladies who've done it quite a lot and they've been on some courses, and they were saying that instead of using the rolling pin and the um like the the mat, the wicker mat, that they'd been on a course where you use bubble wrap. So you put your picture, you lay your picture down, you know, get it all wet and everything with your soap, and then instead of using a rolling pin, you just roll it up, like you don't know what rolling is, so that's why I'm doing instructions. You roll it up in the um, bubble wrap and just keep rolling it in the bubble wrap um, and it works a lot better. So I'm going to give that method a go. So watch this space. They were obviously felters themselves, weren't they? Yes. They're, well, they've been on a felting course. Yeah. Um, and th th they've been making pictures and she said that she'd done it with the other methods and she said this method was so much more effective. Um, so I thought, right, I'll give it a go. Plus it says... Gillian Gladrag. That's who it was. So it saves me that rummaging through the cupboard for all my bits and pieces. Well, it's well, it's, it's worth a go, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So that's a, that was a purchase I got that was non woolly wool. Yes, non knitting wool. Non knitting wool. That was the words I'm looking for. What are you after now then? What else have you got? The only other thing I got was somebody else I wanted to go and see because I watched them podcasting and they were just as they are podcasting and that was Suzanne from Green Lankin Yarns. Caroline had been earlier in the day and had seen she'd got a sock knitted up that was almost in broken stripes. So Caroline bought that. And then Marie, I'll show you. Marie went and bought that. So I thought, well, I'm not going to get that. I'll look for something else. And then I found that. Beautiful yarns. And, I mean, most unlike me, because it's on sparkle. Yeah. Very but nice. it's just red, pink, teal, and then two greens. Quite a bright, vibrant green. Nice. I really, really like it. And this one, I, well, as soon as I saw it, I thought, I picked it up anyway. It's called Candy Cane Forest. So nice. I thought, it's obviously a Christmas one. That can be my Christmas in July cast on, a Candy Cane Forest. So, um, yeah, she's got some beautiful, beautiful yes. yarns. Really nice. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that one knits up because... Just the colours caught my eye, so... Do you know what you're going to make with it, the yes, last or... purchase. Do you know what you're going to make with it, yes? Um, I'm not 100%, no. Not socks, I don't think. 
not socks. Well, like Dominique said, um, she went there first. Look what she got me from the same place. Look at that cute little apple. You'd already been. You'd already been and not oh, seen I'd been. That's right. I'd already been. Look at that cute little apple. She's got some beautiful stitch markers. I've got some really nice stitch markers. Yeah. So, um, got a little, little apple. And then this is the one that um, Dominique was talking about. I'd seen Caroline with it and I just fell in love with it. I'll show you the... Um, so I think I am going to make the socks out of it. Look at all the colours, the beautiful rainbows in there. Um, the socks did look really nice yeah. that she got knit up. Um, yeah, did. So um, that is what I shall be... And what was that called? This one is called Lumpkin Through the Snow. Oh, that's right, yeah. So I shall wind that up. Was that sparkle as well? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm saying that, I don't know if you, I don't think it all was sparkle, but I can't remember. I think the majority of her stock is sparkle. Oh, sparkle, yeah. yeah. But I love the colour purple in that. Really nice. She's got a lot of colours and still left a lot of undyed yarn yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, really yeah. pretty. Yeah, really so that nice. That looks probably different the way I've scanned it up there. Um, yeah. But that that's what Caroline said. You just, Caroline had not paid any attention to the skein and then saw it knit up. Um, and it does sometimes, you just, when I you see it knit up, it draws your attention, doesn't it? I think we found that though, haven't we, with the samples that we've got, you know, in the shawls, the jumpers and everything. It yeah. does help sell the wool, doesn't it, if you can show your samples. Yes. Um, because people see it knitted up. It's like one lady who was looking at a, at a shawl that we had hung up, which was... Um, Flamingo. And yes. she said, oh, can I take a photograph of it? And I went, yes, of course you can take a photograph of it. She said, I just love the colours. I love the wool. Um, and it said to me, I said to her, we do have it. And she said, I can't, I, I haven't seen anything like that. And I took her over and I, I got the ball. I mean, she she did buy it. She said, I didn't realise yeah. it was that. And it, it's just strange, isn't it? How, um, so I do think that when people see it knit up, it does... It, does it is really difficult because people say, how does it knit up? You can give them an example, but all that example is how it is knit up like in that. that thing. Because we've got things that are knit up in a shawl and in socks and they look completely different. Because the flamingo is not self-striping at all, but it is almost, the way it's tied, yes. almost in stripes on a sock. If you did it in a sock, it would be, wouldn't it? Very but sad. you don't see that in the shawl. So, But no. it does, you do get to see all the colours knit up, so it is a good way of doing it, but yeah. We've well, done that before, haven't we, in jumpers I've knit in, in multicoloured yes. yarn, where when you do it, and if you do a yoke, so the pattern, the way the yarn goes, looks completely different at the top, and then as soon as you reduce your stitches, it's completely different, isn't it? Yeah. It's like two different yarns. So, it, you know, yeah. you can knit swatches up and you can show swatches, but it only shows it for that amount of stitches. Yeah. It's difficult, isn't it? So... Yeah. Yeah. But no, the, the socks that she'd got obviously drew all of our attention. So yeah. she did... Yeah. It, they definitely did draw you to the, to the yarn. Um, so, yeah, that would be... That's the only thing, isn't it, when you're showing lots of different yarns off? But um, yes, so that is all my purchases. My eyes are stinging even more now with the fiber. Um, yeah, we were well, like, we were both really quite restrained, and like I say, we were quite restrained. I, I really I knew I wanted a gobstopper from Helen just because they normally sell out so quickly. Um, and as soon as I saw, um Suzanne's yarn, I was like, no, I definitely need some of this as well. So, um, well, let's be fair, on the Saturday, we didn't really have much chance to look around, did we? We were, we were, you know, we were kept going. Um, yes. So it was yes. on the Sunday, really, afternoon, wasn't it, that we managed to get round and have a look. And I still yes. never got down to the other end, like one corner of it. I never got down there. Yeah. So. But, and I think you're just conscious that you do go for a look round, but you're not there shopping because people had bought different bits you're like well where on earth was that from and thinking well I've looked at that stall but yeah. you've done it as a 
I'm, I'm just going to have a quick wander yeah. around rather than going in and looking at everything properly. So, which was um, why it was nice for people to come and show us what they'd been buying because we then sort of knew where we were heading yeah. to, didn't we? So, yeah. um, we're blaming you, Caroline. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, Becky'd got quite a lot as well. Iris did. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. We're not monogamous, are we? We'd like to go and buy wool from wherever we can and wherever yeah. we like it from. Whatever. Pretty and catches our eye. And um, talking of wool, I can show you our own wool. You know, that would be quite nice, wouldn't it? So this is what I've decided to knit the trail and break blaze shawl in, which is a make-along. Um, and I'm going to take that on holiday. So I'll go on holiday um, second week of July. So that's my plan. I'm not going to cast it on till then. And I'm doing it in sparkle on the Trivial Pursuit, which was... Um, the colour that we had at um, Wool Monty. So I think that's going to look nice. I think it is. I think it's going to be a really summery shawl. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward to starting that. But as I say, I'm not going to do it yet because I want to take it on holiday with me and sit on the plane and do that. That'll be but the make along started, hasn't it? It's all summer. Oh, is it? Right, yeah. yeah. It's, um, yes, it's, a, it's, it's through, through summer. The um, I did read somewhere till the end and of it, August. Yeah, the under the olive tree. Yeah, under the olive tree. It's running until the thirty first of August. Right. Well, so it's 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 over summer, so I shall have plenty of time to do that. Um, so that's what I'm going to use. I said I wasn't sure, and I said I thought I was going to do it in the spark, and you dyed that for me, didn't you? So, um, so yeah. Because I'm even though we're there for two days, and all our walls in front of us. We don't really get much chance to look, you know, pick things up and put them down because every time we did, it, it was fantastic. Every time we did, we'd have a customer and someone would come up and speak to us. So, or we uh, see people putting, like you said, people putting colours together and we think, Ooh, yes, that's quite nice. Yeah. That's part of that. um, yeah. But we did, well, I managed to, well, we both did. We managed to um, choose some yarn, didn't we, for, for a shawl, both of us that you said you were going to start this, and it all came from the podcast last week, didn't it? Um, when Victoria told us about a shawl that, that she was knitting, because we were at both saying, didn't know what we wanted to knit. You in particular wanted a new cast on. Um, and it's the um, under the rainbow pattern. So I didn't want to be left out, of course. So we chose, we were choosing some minis, weren't we, to go with it. Um, yeah. And I've started mine. I'll tell you a tale with it. So I've started mine. So I'm using Undyed as the main colour. And the minis I've gone for are Electric Blue, Magenta, a Pale Purple Rain, Emerald, Ultra Blue and Purple Rain. The, the colours are... It's really strange. It must be the light. That's better. Because the magenta look like scarlet. It, so, that, that looks much more like magenta, yeah. I had yeah. actually done quite a bit more knitting. Last night I was sat doing it and I was watching TV. I started binge watching Stranger Things again. Um, so I was watching TV and it is, you know, a fairly straightforward pattern. Once you get into the rhythm of it, you know. I wasn't really looking at my knitting. I was just counting, doing my knitting, looking down, right, changing the colour. On the green on this bit here, on this green. Inadvertently, I'd made a mistake. I was doing this lace in the blue and I thought, I'm running out of this. I'd only got to about this depth and I thought, that can't be right. Why am I running out of the mini? That mini's got to last me till the other end of the shawl. Do you know what I mean? To repeat this, this bit again. I looked at the pattern. <sighs> Doing the pattern right, I looked at the wool, have I got the right yarn? Yes, 20 gram minis. Couldn't work it out. And because I was knitting, it was all scrunched up. I hadn't really looked at my knitting flat. Then I pulled my knitting out. And from here, because the pattern is actually a set number of stitches and you work it all the way along. This bit here is a combination of purl two together and yarn over. In my madness, I decided from here to just purl it and yarn over. So I increased it by 100 stitches on that one row. Then I did exactly the same on that row. So I did another 
200 stitches because by then, and then I'd also done it on the purple row. I had loads of stitches on the lace and I'm not joking. When I like smoothed it out, I thought you complete and utter lunatic. I kept thinking, these rows are taking me absolutely ages. I must just be tired. No. So literally I had like a little bit of yarn left at that stage. I mean, look, I've got loads left. I was gonna say that's a mini, isn't it? So there's still quite a lot left. So I had to pull it all out last night to the green and start it again. And now it looks like it should do. What a complete and utter plonker. It's going to be really interesting because Victoria's going to bring hers next week and hers are the muted ones. Yeah. They're going to look completely different. Yeah. So I've gone for just a mixture of pinks, greens and purples. Um, but what colour have you, have you decided on? Well, I've got, I'm, pattern to knit. I've got to say it's a really nice pattern to knit because you don't really have to look too much of the pattern. Well... Or, I've not problem. decided and I don't know what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to wait until you've done it. Otherwise, we're just going to bore people showing the same thing. So, but I mean, I'd picked these minis. I'd gone bright. But I'm not convinced at all. Not like, I really like them together. Yeah. Because then I did think, do I use that? Yes. I'm not feeling it. You're not ready yet. You're not there, are you? I thought not I wanted it. to do a really bright one. And I don't think I do anymore. So, so I don't know. I don't know. It will just come to me. Unfortunately, I've got all the minis at mine, so I can just get them out and have a play. Like we picked them, I think, very late on the Saturday. Yeah. And I was just like, that'll do. And I love them together. I really do love them six together. Yeah. Well, my plan is to crack on with this now and over the retreat, probably, because there's no way I'm going to be doing that pink jumper or on knitting natters or when there's people around. So my plan is I'm going to take the pink jumper on holiday with me in my suitcase. And that'll be when I'm sat on my own got time to think I'm going to take the jumper and do that on holiday right um, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, Victoria I did wonder if I might lose them this there is quite a lot of unless you did it the reverse way around and then did like really dark minis but um, Marion said what about dark base that's why I've got you I've got Marie to bring me the midnight because I thought they would look brilliant with the midnight, and I think they will. The only thing that stopped me doing that is I have already got a shawl that is midnight similar, yes. with neons. So, well, you could use that as the base, that multicolored one, but instead turn it the opposite way around. So, do your the stripe colors. You could do them in midnight, deep navy, deep, you know, like very dark green. Yeah. You could go, you could turn it on its head, do you know what I mean? And so that the stripes would stand out because they are very, very dark compared yeah. to those colours. Well, now you've just said that, why do you have to use minis at all? Why can't I use that instead of minis yes. with a midnight yeah. background? But well, then the only problem is going to be when you come to the lace section. Well, it's not, it just won't be striped, will it? No, that's it'll what I mean, it'll just all be one colour, won't it? Yeah. Yeah, you could do that. That would look nice. Or what you could do is you could do like two rows of two rows of that as the lace, and then just put one dark midnight lace in, and then go back. Yeah, I just really quite like this, and I think it might look really nice. I don't know. I, I it will it will just come to me, and I'll just do it. I'm going to wait now and see Victoria's because I don't go muted that often, but I don't know. It'll just come to you and you'll just decide, won't you? You'll just yeah. start looking. Yeah. So but I do think, well, I, I know the brights, like with midnight, 
or charcoal or dark navy look stunning. But I just thought I do have yeah. almost them colours with midnight already. So not that that, I don't suppose it really matters, but we'll see. And I just thought there's no point is both keep showing the same thing because no, that's my fault because I just wanted it cast on and I just um, decided to cut, steal your idea of that show. It it will it will happen at some point. So and now the poncho's off the needles. I'll see. I've got other things on the needles for now. I've got other things to be getting on with. Getting on. Well, that is all my knitting I have. Well, I've got these. These will get moved on now because I can go back to them. I have eventually turned the heels on your funny feet. So I've turned my heels on my funny feet so I can just get on with just knitting, going round and yeah. round and round. So, um, and these are much more conducive to knitting in heat than a double knit poncho um so i'd started to set up for a heel flap and gusset and then put the pattern down somewhere and then when i came back to doing them i'd lost the pattern found another pattern that i clearly didn't look at properly and it was just a not a heel flap and gusset but anyway, there's heels in them. There's heels in them and they're turned and we're ready to go. So all I've got on my needles now is that. And then I had a new cast on just because I thought having bought a gobstopper from Helen, I really ought to use that. Oh, that is nice, that colourway. So I have literally just... Oh, make sure I'm not pulling the wrong one out. I've just cast it on and I've just done two colours. Um, nice. Are you going top down? I am going top down. Oh, Lord, what's the matter with you? You know, well, you them up. Because I've got a feeling I might just knit a tube. Ah, right. So I might just knit, 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 knit. Knit, knit, knit. Rib at the other end and then put heels and toes in, or I might just knit one, put a toe in, and then knit a second one. Yeah, I've not decided because there's a hundred grams there. I might just do really long, stripy socks. So Ooh, I thought if nice. I do that, I just need to. Knit as tube as long as I can. I don't know what I'm going to do. They're just to cast on and mindless go round and round. And then do an afterthought heel. Yes. I think I'm going to do an afterthought heel anyway, just because I don't want to interrupt the stripes. Yeah. Um, but I really like it because I am... Well, that is the start of the next colour. So it's yeah. really quick. Nice. And like we've said, you, you knit faster when you're changing colour, doesn't, doesn't it? Because you want five to see rows. You want to in see rib, like. there's five rows between before you change colour. So, um, but I just thought I bought this not that long ago, and then I bought another one from Helen, and I thought, well, I really ought to crack on and let's nice. knit something. So. And when it's so hot, socks are easy. So this is Lucky Unicorn from the Laughing Yaffle, and I think it's 14 colour stripes. Wow. Um, that look fantastic in really long socks. Well, that's what I just... Yeah, fab. Otherwise, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to use it all, am I? No, that's a good idea. So we'll see. I, but I've just cast them on just so I can go round and round and round. Um, and because, and it never bothers me, it's not bothered me with the funny feet, but these, I want the stripes to go the right way, which is why I'm doing them one at a time, or I'll do a tube and... Yeah. Although I can't put rib at the end of the tube because then they'd go the opposite way. I'm just knitting them. These are something that's just going to be on the needles 
and do a stripe at get into bed and just do a stripe before yeah. I go to sleep or something. So, but I thought I better start using some of the yarn I keep buying. We've not got a show now till Yarndale, so I can stop my buying now. Yes. Until I see something else. <laughs> but you've not got a holiday plan somewhere where you'll be visiting a yarn shop. I've not got a holiday planned, but every now and again I just keep looking. So there's but it's school holidays, so I know, I know. Anyway, we'll see. We will see. Um you may get inspiration from people who are coming to the retreat. You never know. We exactly. Know we? Yes. Yeah, there'll be there'll be lots of inspiration, I have no doubt. Um anything else? We've mentioned the golden ticket. Well, there was something else we were meant to mention, I thought, but... What? But we've not planned anything, so we'll have to wait till next week. I thought we were doing it next week after it's posted out. Not that. Not that. Doesn't matter, you'd put it in your phone, but it's obviously not come up. Put it in my phone? Don't worry, we'll do it next week. We're not prepared. You're intriguing me now. I put it in my phone. No, all I've got today for my... I've got it... No, it's on... I've got it for the 8th on my phone. Right. Was it supposed to be today? Yeah. But it doesn't matter. I thought we'd said the 8th, and I'll tell you why we said the 8th afterwards. Right, OK. Well, don't worry, everybody. You like it when we talk in cryptic messages, don't you? There'll be an announcement on the 8th of July. <laughs> and you'll, you'll, Marjorie? Yeah. Marjorie? <laughs> Is that, uh, that comment? Are you channeling um, your thoughts? Um, well, in that case, I've not got anything else. I haven't got anything else. Um, we will be podcasting next week. It's the we're in between things. So on the Thursday we've got a um, afternoon tea. Oh, knit and natter. If you still want to come, there are spaces for it. We know that people like to leave it till the last minute for some of the knit and natters. Yes. Decide on you know what the weather's going to be like or whether they're busy. So it's on Thursday next week. Um, but the cut off date it generally is a couple of days before. Um, so if you do still want to cut, if anybody wants to come to the knit knitting. Um, afternoon tea on Thursday at Hemswell. We have got some spaces. Um, and that was the other thing. We did say, tell you last week, Melly oh, from yeah. Rick Rat Womb was coming. She's messaged us today. She's not very well, so yeah. she's not going to be able to come. No. So um, if you were coming and hoping to see her, we'll rearrange it and it'll happen on yeah. another one. But on she's not day. very well, so yeah. she's not going to make it. Um, so we're in between. So we've got the knitting. We, we never even thought about this, did we, when we booked it? So we've got the knitting afternoon tea on the Thursday. Friday, we'll be podcasting as normal because then on the Saturday, we've got the retreat. So, yeah, um, yeah I'm looking forward to it. Yes. But I'm not sure what we're going to do after that because I, I go on holiday on the Saturday. So we need to look at when we're doing podcasting and stuff. So we'll, but we'll let you know next week. Yeah, we'll do the eighth, but we will, I probably won't be able to do the one after that. Um, I don't think there's any. Is there anything else anybody wants to know from us? Anything? I can't think of anything else. No, I can't think of anything else. We'll be announcing the next sock club next next Friday. Not sock club, yarn club whatever we keep calling it. Yeah, so, back um, to the 80s. Yeah, the back to the 80s. So the Dallas will be posted out um, this coming week. That's all yes. ready to go. Um, yeah. So we'll release our new theme next next week. Um, all exciting stuff. I can't think of anything else. No questions. Anybody questions? No questions. If there's no questions, we shall... No. Disappear. The sun's back out again now. My eyes are stinging. I need to go get some eye drops in my eyes. Well, in that case, those of you coming, we will see you next Saturday. Yes. Everyone have a safe trip to Victoria. Have a safe flight. Yeah, have a good flight. And we will we'll speak to you next Friday.
while you're in the UK. Yeah. Just remember, it's a different time we'll be on Victoria. Yes. Yes. Look after Bye. yourself, everybody. See you next week. See you all next Bye. week. Bye. Oh, hang, on, hang on, hang on. Oh, yeah, go on. Tracy's just asked a question. Bye. Can you tell me how, should I cast on with straight and try? Yeah, I, I usually do when I'm casting on and then I'm turning it into a circle. I tend to cast on my stitches on me. You can either do it on straight needles or on your cable. And I tend to do two rows and then I join it. Just gives you, so it it's, prevents the twisting of the stitches. Do you do that or not? Um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I do a bit of both. So casting that on, I didn't, I just cast on however many I needed on yeah. each needle. Yeah, I do sometimes, but if I do, I do, I do yeah. Two, I three, always do it. I always four. cast on. And then knit a couple of rows just because I can see them where the stitches are and it doesn't twist yes. when you're joining it. So and as long as you've let, le left a long tail, yeah, you just can join it together the first row or two. Yeah. Um, and I so tend yeah. to do that not long after I've gone past it. I tend to sew it up so I know I haven't got a gap. Yeah. Yeah. That's usually it's usually the easiest way to deal with your stitches, um, Tracy. Um, but don't but always knit one or two rows because if you just cast on and then try and transfer it it's it's really yeah. difficult yeah um, so either, either do it on straight needles and then transfer to your thing or i i never use straight needles now i just do it on on um my circulars anyway and knit backwards and forwards i mean if you do it if you cast on on your circulars and knit back and forth for two rows it's easy then because you could the there you can just yeah move your stitches to the middle of your cable and yeah bend it in you half would, can't you? You would do it so like pretend that you've you know you've that's your that's your amount of stitches, Tracy. Yeah. So they're on the circular needle. But knit straight on your straight doing it straight and then you would just fold it in half or count your stitches and then pull out your cable there. Put your stitches to the your working needle is always the one at the back, and then you would just join it like yeah. this, like there, and your cables hanging out the back there. Yeah. That is if you're doing magic loop or if you've got it so that you you know it might be like that. Yes. Um, if, yeah, if you so know, there's lots of videos on YouTube about knitting in the round and joining and yeah. It's like Perfect. anything, it's a new skill and it takes a couple of goes, but that I think is the easiest way to yeah. do it. It saves you getting your stitches twisted because you could there's more substance to it, the work. Yes. Right. Yeah. On that, that was not well timed, Tracy. Just well, before. Well,